Hey guys, my name is Will Cecil and today I'm going to be giving you a quick tutorial for CRT Converter version 1.4. Got some really cool new features that I'm excited to show you guys. And uh, so yeah, we're just going to dive right into it. Uh, today I'm going to be going over this in After Effects. Everything I'm showing you can be done in Premiere Pro as well. Uh, the interface might look a little bit different, but it's pretty intuitive. So we're just going to dive right in. Very first thing that we need to do is uh, we're going to start with dragging some footage into our timeline. I already have some example footage you can see here. It's just a guy doing a little dance. I'll show you real quick. Just kind of a nice groovy dance. We're going to run with that today. So once you've got your footage in the timeline, you're going to select it. And then you're going to go up to the top. You're going to hit Effect. Hover over Will Cecil and CRT Converter will be right there. It'll take a second to apply, and as you can see, we're already getting started. So I'm just going to go through each parameter and explain exactly what it does and how it affects your image. So to start off with, you'll see there are five parameters right here. There's presets, smooth scaling, CRT scale, and brightness and contrast. So to start off with presets, these are going to be the patterns that the CRT effect makes over your image. As you can see here, I'll zoom in for you. It's a grid pattern of the RGB pixels. And if we just switch between, you'll see that with staggered vertical, it just offsets them a little bit vertically. Horizontally does the same thing, but side to side. And then we have what is called Trinitron, where instead of individual blocks, it's actually lines of RGB, and they either go vertically or horizontally. Those are the five presets right now. Those are based on actual old school CRT television technology. That's actually how they worked. It was called a shadow mask. I'll leave you guys to Google that for your own curiosities. For now, we'll go ahead and keep moving down to smooth scaling. So this is an interesting one, and if you don't know what it is, it might be a little confusing. Smooth scaling allows you to scale the CRT pattern linearly rather than in stair steps. And the reason that this isn't enabled by default is because it can do some very strange color distortion. Uh, some people like that, so I decided to include it as a feature. Uh, by default, it's turned off, so you'll see that as we drag the CRT scale, the pattern will scale up and down in a clicky stair step pattern without color distortion. Uh, but if you turn it on and scale it, you'll see it's a lot smoother, and it's actually not doing as bad of a job with Trinitron, so we'll go over to Grid. And as we start to scale it, you'll see it does a little bit better of a job showing that wacky color distortion like this. It's interesting. I think there's a way to do it stylistically that would be really cool. But by default, that's turned off so that you maintain the original color data from your image. We're going to reset that scale to 3. And as you can see in that last example, CRT scale just changes the size of the CRT pattern in your image. So if you want something very fine and subtle, you could change that to one, like that. Or if you want something really stylistic and uh, distorted or, or grungy, you can crank it up to like six or seven. And you'll see you'll still have that image, but it'll be much lower resolution. Uh, and I'll go ahead and play and show that to you guys. So as you can see, it's kind of an interesting style. You could use that in a music video or a short film or any number of situations. Uh, I'm just going to reset that back down to two. It's kind of a nice middle ground. It's fine, but it's not too subtle. Um, and then lastly, up in the first five parameters, we've got brightness and contrast. These are very self-explanatory. If you need a little bit more brightness, you can just crank that up. And if you have too much, you can pull it back down. Same with the contrast. If you want a little bit more contrast in your image, you can crank that up. Or if you want a desaturated look, you can turn that down. Pretty self-explanatory there. Next, we're going to move to the vignette uh, subgrouping. So these parameters all have to do with the modular vignette that comes baked into CRT Converter. So this is one of my favorite parts about CRT Converter. And I think the vignette really helps to sell the effect of an old school TV. If you're not familiar, old CRT televisions, the glass on the front of it kind of bubbled out. And what it did was the edges of the screen weren't hard right angles like we're used to on modern LED and OLED panels. 
And so the vignette is a really great way of kind of cheating that effect. And it, and it really helps sell everything, in my opinion. Um, of course, you can enable and disable it just with this checkbox. So this is great. Say you're shooting a short film and a character is watching something on a CRT TV, you can disable the vignette and you can actually key your footage in to a different scene. So it's a really great way of compositing some VFX if you want to get rid of the vignette. Totally, totally cool if you do that. But if you're doing it full screen for a music video or something like that, it might be nice to help sell the effect with this. So we're going to turn it back on and I'm going to show you what these parameters do. So width and height, again, probably a little self-explanatory. These just adjust how wide and tall the vignette is. So if we crank it up, You'll see we have a much smaller, almost like a 4-3 aspect ratio, something a little bit more old school. Um, and then if we crank up the height as well, you can see it cranks down even farther. So this could be interesting if you're doing some kind of stylistic piece. You can cut between different vignette sizes just to add a little bit more variety. Um, there are tons of ways you can do this. Again, I would love for you guys to experiment with it. Uh, we'll just reset those real quick. Um, next is blur width. So this actually adjusts how wide the blur between the vignette and the image is. So if you wanted to set it down to zero, for example, you see that gives us a nice crisp line around the image. We do get some color distortion over here, and I'll zoom in and show you what that is. Um, that's, that's actually just the vignette cutting off some of the CRT image. And so what happens when you zoom back out, of course, is that since you're only getting a sliver of the RGB block, it looks like chromatic aberration or some kind of color distortion. Uh, so again, if you don't want that, you can just turn the blur back up. If you think it's an interesting glitchy effect, then by all means, set your blur width to zero and have at it. Um, but we'll go ahead and play that back up to 25 so I can show you guys a little bit how it works. You see it's starting to blur back in. We'll set it to 25. This is the default. And we'll set it up to 50 to show you guys what it looks like when it's cranked up. And as you can see, it's a much softer, smoother vignette. And last is curve. Again, probably self-explanatory, but this adjusts how much the corners of your image curve. So if we set that down to zero, we get a square vignette. Uh, it could be interesting, of course, if you're going for a widescreen aspect ratio or something like that. Or if you want to get really stylistic, you can crank the curve back up and you get a much smoother, uh, almost, uh, to me, this feels almost more like 1970s for some reason. Uh, no idea why, but you can play around with that as much as you want. By default, it's at five. It uh, feels the most naturalistic to me, but again, encourage you guys to play with it. I always, always, always encourage you guys to just play around with the settings, see what you can find, see what feels good to you. Um, because I have my own opinions about how you can use these plugins, but that doesn't mean they're the right opinions, and I encourage you guys to experiment on your own. Anyways, okay, that <laughs> preaching aside, uh, moving on lastly to Glow. So Glow uh, is enabled by default. It helps brighten up the image and, and again, sells the effect a little bit, uh, but I'll go ahead and turn it off for you here so you can see the difference. As you can see, it starts off a little subtle, but it's just a nice way of kind of lifting the image back up. And, and again, it helps sell that kind of glowing effect that CRT televisions actually used to give. Um, of course, if it's not right for your project, turn it off. But if you think it's right, and if you want it to lift up the brightness of the footage a little bit, it's a great way to do it without using the brightness slider, which can sometimes be a little finicky. Uh, the glow just gives you a little bit more hands-on control. Anyways, we'll go through the parameters now. Uh, the threshold for glow, this is at what level you want the pixels in your image to be affected by the glow. So the higher you turn this threshold up, the fewer pixels are gonna glow, or the brighter they'll have to be to activate the glow effect. So I'll show you that. So you'll see in the light around this guy, when I turn it up, that will continue to glow, but the darks of his hoodie and of the background will stop glowing. So I'll show you now. So if you can see, it starts glowing a little bit less and a little bit less until if you crank it to 100, nothing is glowing unless it's absolute peak brightness. Um, and if you, on the opposite end of the spectrum, if you set it to zero, everything will glow. 
in the image, uh, or one rather, everything will glow. Even the darks of his hoodie, those are glowing too. Everything is emitting a soft glow of light. So we're gonna turn that back up to 25. And that's what threshold does. Now radius controls how far something glows. So if a pixel in the light background over here has a 50 radius, it'll glow 50 pixels around it, okay? So if we crank that down, you get a much more controlled and tight glow to your image. So I'll turn that to 15 now. And you'll see you still have the glow. I'll, show, I'll disable it to show you. You still have the glow effect, but it's a lot more controlled and it's a lot more tight to the image. We can take that down even further to like five, and it's a very tight uh, glow around him. It doesn't bleed over into his hoodie or into his jacket or even into the vignette as much. Um, it just helps those light pixels kind of blur together a little bit to make that light background uh, just contrast against the darks of the image quite a bit better. Um, and again, we'll turn that up higher. Say we take it to something back like 50, and now it's a much softer, wider glow. Um, again, there are different situations where a, a bigger radius and a smaller radius work better. For an image like this, I think I would personally crank it down to five or 10 maybe. Um, it gives a little bit more control. It helps him stand out from the background. But again, that's user preference, play around with it. Um, moving on to intensity, that is how much your glow works. So if we take the intensity from one to two, you'll see it glows a lot more. Um, I don't think that you guys will ever take the intensity too high. It can go to 10. I see very little, uh, I, I haven't run into very many situations where a 10 intensity actually works. Um, but again, you have the room to play around with that. See, if we go, I'll, for example, if we go to five, that's a lot. You probably won't need that much in your image unless you're going for a dream sequence or something very stylized but usually around two, two to three um, is kind of the upper limits that I've found. Um, and you can, of course, do like one and a half if you want something a little bit more, but you'll need to play around with that. Uh, the last two are quality and glow direction. So quality is quite strictly the quality of the glow. So if you set it lower, I guess you can't see it as well in this image, but if you see, uh, if I crank it up to three, you'll see it smooths off the glow a little bit. It just gives a slightly higher quality uh, fall off. Now this is gonna affect your render times a little bit. The higher quality you put, the slower the render is gonna be. It shouldn't be a huge difference, but you might notice it on lower spec machines or on longer uh, sequences. I usually set the quality to one or two. I find around there it usually works well. If you're doing typography, uh, that usually you'll want a higher glow. You'll notice it a little bit more if it's bright text against a ba uh, black background or a darker background. In an image like this, it might not show quite as much, um, but you have that option. And then lastly is glow direction. So this is a really interesting one. I've really enjoyed playing around with this and I'm excited to see how you guys choose to play around with it. By default, the glow is horizontal and vertical. That's just your standard glow. But if you wanna get stylistic with it, say you're doing typography work or you're doing something where you have a little room to play around, setting it to horizontal and vertical is an interesting way to just do some kind of crazy cool effects. So horizontal, for instance, what it does is it only blurs your image left to right. Um, it's a little subtle here, but I'll show you. That's horizontal and vertical, and then just horizontal, you see it becomes a lot more streaky, and vertical is more streaky uh, up and down. You can do some really cool stuff with it. It's not for every situation, but it's there in case you want it. And that is CRT Converter 1.4. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please, please, please feel free to reach out to me uh, through my website, or you can email me at contact at willcecil.net. I love hearing from you guys, and I'm always happy to answer any questions or concerns that you might have. But for now, uh, thank you guys for being patient and sticking in through this a little bit lengthy tutorial. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Otherwise, best of luck with your projects, and have a great day. All right, bye guys.